Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the threaded gem. This is going to allow you to create a Reddit alternative. Say for example, if half the site were down due to a protest because of some cringe API changes, this will allow you to create your own alternative. Benefits of this, of course, are you don't have that platform risk. The only concern you have, of course, is the platform risk you probably have on your hosting provider. So just make sure that you uh, are always in a position where if you do host your own content, you can navigate over to another service if you need to in an emergency. But what this is going to allow you to do is create a similar forum setup uh, where you just have a bunch of message boards. Of course, we've all used forums like five or 10 years ago. Uh, and what a message board is, is just a place like a, a subreddit. So you just say, this is my uh, general uh, message board or like, I don't know, like my memes or something. And then we can just say, haha, funny. We can then create this because I'm a admin on the website. We can create this. It gives us another place to post. We can click on the post and we can see here we can post just like we want to. Say, haha, funny, and then uh, click create new topic. You can sticky your to topics. You can click on these. You can also add additional uh, commentary to them if you're so inclined and other users can also see these. For example, if we come over here to all message boards, come into programming, see that a big company announces return to office. We can scroll down through here and we can see that John replied to this saying they're probably just doing this so they can save money by not having to fire people. Uh, we can see that I'm following this topic. I can of course stop following if I want to or refollow it. Uh, I can see that I posted it. I can click edit if I want to. I can see who it's followed by. I can quote it if I want to. So this allows me to uh, say a uh, good point. And we get that similar block quote functionality right here where that allows us to quote the entire article. Uh, additionally, we can come over here to the moderation section because I'm an admin. There's a bunch of stuff in here that I now need to approve uh, to make sure that all of this is, you know, looking good. Of course, this will get cumbersome as your project scales up. So you do want to make sure that you're not uh, worried about that 24 seven. You can see the history of everything that was approved and who was approved by the activity, uh, the users. So we can see these two user accounts. We can come over to the notifications. Now these aren't set up yet, so this will error out. But if you set up a uh, email provider with this, you can then get email notifications if someone replies to you. So that's pretty cool. And come over here to the private messages where I can see two conversations with John. So I can click here, say, hi, John. Uh, we can see that I have a code block here with different formatting. I can say hello again and click send message. And then if John signs in, he'll be able to see these messages. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at all of this, right? So uh, how do we set this up? To set it up, it's gonna be really simple. I'm gonna go through this pretty quick because I don't wanna take a bunch of time. First thing we have to do is add the gem to our gem file. So we'll come in here and we'll do a new project. We'll say Rails new video dash J ES build dash C bootstrap. These steps are optional. You don't need to use ES build and bootstrap. It will just make your project look a little bit better. We can go ahead and then run a CD into the video project and a code dot to open this up in VS Code. Okay, now that we have all of that done, there's a couple things we're gonna have to do. First, we're gonna wanna add all of our gems. So we're gonna do a bundle add, and then we're gonna add the device gem for user accounts. We have to set up device before we can set up threaded. We're gonna add simple forms so the device looks a little better. We're gonna add the threaded gem for our forums. And then optionally, if you want to have emoji support, you can add the gemoji gem. Uh, the, uh, the emojis will be something like colon joy colon if you wanna use that. The issue is even with the gemoji gem, you will still need to add in your own emoji images. I just wanna point this out because it is supported but uh, you're gonna have broken image links until you follow the Jemoji setup to actually get that uh, emoji image into your application. Just, just to make sure you're aware of that. Now, what we wanna do is actually set up device. So we're gonna be generating quite a few migrations here and a bunch of other stuff. So we're gonna start with a Rails G device colon install command. We're then going to run a Rails G device user command. After we run that device user command, we now need to generate our migrations. First things first, uh, we're going to do a Rails G migration, add username to users with a username of type string that is unique with UNIQ as the keyword there. We're then going to, uh, let me just make sure I can full screen this. We're then going to uh, optionally index our usernames. So we're going to say Rails G migration uh, index uh, usernames. 
So we're gonna have to open up this migration. So let's come over here into our DB folder, our migrate and click on the last migration. Inside of this change section, I'm gonna copy something from the readme. All of this code will be available in the uh, video description as well. But uh, we're just gonna use this so we can actually index our usernames. That's listed in the readme under the, uh, what is it? The DB text search right here. Uh, it's under the add threaded to an existing Rails app. Uh, just as an aside, if you want to do that, I'm just showing you how to do it right here. That will generate that migration. Now the last thing we have to do is do a Rails G uh, migration, add roles to users with a admin colon Boolean and a mod colon Boolean. So you can also have moderators. We're not using the enum roles here. We're using these Booleans because I think that's how uh, Threaded expects it. Now that all of that's done, we're gonna go ahead and generate our views for device. So let's do a, uh, what is it? A Rails G simple underscore form colon install space dash dash bootstrap to make our device forms look better. And now we have to do a Rails G device colon views command to generate our device views. And finally, because we have those usernames, we're gonna make it so that users can set their usernames when they sign up. So let's do a Rails G device colon controllers, I think for users. That's how we do that. Okay, and now we have to copy this device for and put this into our route. So let's come over here to our config and our routes.rb. Uh, after the uh, device for users here, we're gonna do it like this. We want the controllers. This needs to be the registrations controller, which will go to user slash registrations. Okay, so now let's come into our app, our controllers, our users, and our registrations controller. Let's uncomment both of these because we want users to be able to edit their user account, usernames, and to sign up with a username, which means we have to uncomment this protected. We have to uncomment the sign up params and the account update params. And for each of these, we'll add the username to it. There we go, just like that. So that now allows us to do the usernames in the back end, but now we have to come into our views, devise, registrations and our edit will start in here for our edit what we want to do is just say after the email we want to do a uh, f dot input for the username with a uh, required of true and we'll just leave it like that so that gives us our username now let's grab this username and let's put this into our registrations new after the email just like that uh, so now we can also input our username there so that allows us to sign up with our usernames. That's good. Now let's do the threaded setup, which is going to be a, uh, let me think, it was a Rails G. Okay, for some reason it's not finding it, but it's threaded colon install, just like that. There we go. Uh, so that gives us our initializer. Now we're not going to step through every option in here, but we're just going to take a look at it real quick. So inside of the threaded setup, our user class is still user. Our username column is going to be username. The user path corresponds to uh, your profiles. So if you want, you can do a Rails G controller controller or a profile. We'll give it a show action just like that. Now for that show action, we have to come into our routes inside of our routes. We want to do a get for the users right here, but we want this to be below device. Otherwise, this will override uh, slash user slash sign up, for example, to so make sure that device is above it. Uh, alternatively, you could just, you know, use a different route would probably make more sense. Uh, you can configure that in your threaded uh, initializer. The other thing we have to do is we have to mount the threaded engine. So we'll just do that real quick. So this is where you go to visit your form. So it's going to be slash form. And then if you want your root of your application to go to this forum path, you can do a root to the threaded engine slash message boards controller index action, just like that. Now let's come back over to our, uh, our config. In here, we have the user path. This is where you would customize the user path, but because we did the slash users thing, that'll work for us. Uh, we have the users method, that's fine. Uh, the avatar URL, if this is something you wanna use, it uses the gravatar with the user email. Um, we have the moderator column, which is colon mod, and the admin column, which is colon admin. And then a whole bunch of other stuff in here that you can configure like your post per page and other stuff is ultimately up to you. So that's gonna handle our config. It's gonna handle our edit and our new, our registrations controller, our routes and our migrations. So now let's do our migrations for threaded, which is going to be this command right here. Just go ahead and copy this. 
this is going to generate our threaded migration. So we'll do threaded colon install colon migrations, db colon migrate, db colon test colon prepare. Make sure you run this after you add all of your user stuff, otherwise you'll run into an error. But now because we have it all, this should work just fine. And now after all that's done, before I forget, I have to do a gem install a foreman, I'm in a different version of Rails or Ruby. Uh, and now we should be good to start this. Let's go ahead and let's do a bin slash dev to start our server over here to localhost port 3000 slash forum. We should hopefully see a empty forum page uh, once my browser catches up. So there we go. We're in an empty forum page. Let's click sign up. Let's go over to sign up and go to dean at example.com with a username of let's just do dean in password and password just like that. So now we can see Dean has a profile. Now this uninitialized constant profiles controller here uh, in our routes is going right here. Our routes is going to the uh, profiles controller show action up here in our controllers. We have a profile controller. So that's my bad. I didn't name it right. Let's change this to profiles, change this to profiles, and then come down here into our profile and change this to profiles Go over here and refresh. Now we can see the profile show action. Now, if you want to have a bit more in here, uh, you can show the user's recent posts. So first, let me go make a post so that we can actually see this. To make a post, I have to be an admin to make a message board. So let's just go ahead and do a Rails C. We'll do a u equals user dot first. You can do a u dot update admin colon true. And then we can also uh, do a u dot update for the mod colon true if you want to, right? But let's go ahead and let's do a bin slash dev again to start our server. I hit control D to exit out of that terminal. And now we can create a new message board. So let's do programming again. Uh, haha funny, something like that. Create new message board. And now we have this. Now I wanna come in here and create a new post and say, this is my first post, words go here. And then we can uh, sticky it and create a new topic. So there we go. We have, this is my first post. So now if I come over to Deenan, I want to be able to see my recent posts when I visit this profile page. To do that, we're going to come into the show action of our profiles controller, and we're going to render a partial in profile slash profile. So inside of the profiles folder, new file underscore profile .html.erb. Inside of this profile partial, there's a snippet on the threaded uh, readme. If I search for this, I think it's like threaded slash users right here under the user profile page. You can just go ahead and copy this entire block. We can paste this entire block in and save this. We can then save our show action. This is going to render a partial built into the threaded engine for the user's posts. And it's going to show the newest five posts, I guess. We can come over here to the show page and refresh. And we can see here that threaded posts does not exist for the uh, nil class. So threaded uh, post right here is coming from user. So user does not exist. So let me just uh, come over to the show page right here. User colon at user is does not exist. Let's come into our controllers, our profiles controller, our show action. We need to define a at user. It's going to be the user dot find by uh, and it needs to not be params name. It needs to be the params ID. So we're going to do user.find params ID, just like that. Now let's refresh. And now we can see three little dots appearing here. And by little, I mean ginormous. We can come down here and we can see a couple more things from the posts that this user's made. Okay, so how do we fix these dots? Well, these dots are kind of cumbersome, but the basic idea is uh, there's a section in our render here that's rendering a piece with a broken SVG. So let's go ahead and let's remove that SVG. To do that, we need to edit this partial. To do that, we can come over to the GitHub repo. We can come into the app views threaded, come down to the users and grab the post partial. This is the first step here because it's what's being rendered, oops, rendered in our profile partial is the posts. So let's come into our profile, or not our profiles. Uh, it's gonna be in our threaded. So, so right click on your views, new folder, call it threaded. Inside of threaded, we need to right click new folder, call this users. Inside of that users folder, new file underscore posts.html.erb. Make sure it's plural. This is our posts partial. This posts partial renders the post partial. So under users, new file underscore post singular.html, html.erb. Inside of that singular post partial, we need to grab that. So let's come back up to the users folder 
go into the post partial, copy this and paste it. And if we refresh, you'll see nothing changes yet. But inside, inside of this post partial here, it's rendering this common actions, the posts slash common slash actions. The way you can figure this out is if you comment this out and save it and come over here and refresh, that SVG goes away. So it's definitely inside of this posts uh, co common actions. So let's come over here to our threaded and inside of the, oops, inside of the post common directory. So threaded, right click new folder, post common. And then inside of that, we have a uh, action. So let's come over here to the threaded. Inside of threaded, let's look for posts common. Inside of posts common, let's look for the actions partial. And then let's just go ahead and copy this. So let's come over here to our post common, right click new file, underscore actions.html.erb. You can paste this in, come over here and refresh. You can see this is still working. Uh, and now if we come down here and we remove this last section, we refresh, those SVGs go away. So something in here is broken. And if we get rid of this uh, inline SVG right here, we can see that that also causes this to work okay. So whatever is in this inline SVG right here is what's breaking it in this threaded uh, dot menu SVG. Something in here is broken. So for now, we're just gonna comment this out so that it at least looks okay and we can revisit this in a future video if we want. Now, the final thing we have to do, because uh, we have that working, is to come up here and try a uh, private message to another user. So let's go ahead and let's hit Control Shift N this up incognito sign in and sign up as john at doe.com username can be john doe password and password go ahead and sign up john doe's working now if i come up here and start a new conversation i'll do uh, hi john come down here and do john doe and then we can do hello how are you and then colon joy colon you can see here the colon joy doesn't work. So we'll send this message first of all. And now if John refreshes, he'll see a new DM. Click on this and see that Dean has messaged him. Click on Dean in to see Dean in's profile. To make the emojis work though, the last step is to come over here to our uh, threaded initializer, search for emoji right here. And then you have to uncomment this line right here. Let's go ahead and let's stop our server and start it again. Come over here and refresh. And hopefully when we refresh, we can see the broken image, just like I said. So for that, you're gonna have to come over to the Gemoji gem, and you're gonna have to follow what they suggest for uh, creating the, the images. So you can see here the reference by the file name to your assets directory. So it would be a subdirectory in your assets folder with the emoji inside of it, if you wanted to set that up. But uh, at the very least, you already have autocomplete support for the emojis if you want to. Uh, I don't know, like laughter or something. Um, I don't know. Let me refresh maybe. Colon joy, colon. Uh, we can see the preview down there is working. Let's do cry. Uh, you can see that's working as well. So yeah, that's ultimately up to you. But now you have a forum solution that uh, has moderation capabilities and has uh, admin accounts. Of course, you can't create more admin accounts in here uh, initially. You're gonna have to uh, you know, make sure that you add that functionality in. But again, with all these pages, all you have to do is the same thing I did, is come in here, figure out where the admin partial is rendered. And then uh, in your admin partial, inside of like moderation or whatever, just add in a section that has like a form that lets you create a, or promote a user to an admin, for example. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. I tried to cover as much as I could out of the box. Uh, hopefully this is uh, a good starting point for you. Hopefully you get something out of this and hopefully I will see you in the next video.